Chrome won't bring Linux to old books, even more than at last count. And someone made a power over Ethernet pie, which powers four pies. After eight months of work, UB Ports releases Ubuntu Touch OTA 4 release. Will there be a future for a Linux-based phone OS? Question. Open source Hollywood Blender. And now Blender is not only being taken seriously, but companies want to collaborate with the Blender Foundation. Awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, Intel... Once again, tried to Intel, as only Intel can do. But fortunately, the internet was having none of it. More on that in a minute. We're going to talk about Windows 95 running an Electron, because apparently that's the thing you can do now. Uh, we're also trying to get our feet uh, under us, because everything just caught on fire. Go back and watch the pre, -pre Super Shows, and, or just the regular whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's Yay. go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to take that midweek break and talk about some of the fun things going on in Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Hollywood Jill, you know, we're in LA and all the way from Britannia, one Pedro Mateus. And together we form uh, three people talking about Linux and open source stuff. That's just got to listen. We're gonna, show, wrong show. We're going to do it anyway. So, hey, why not? It's definitely a thing. Uh, before we get going, uh, what, what's new with everyone? Jill, outside of your yeah. power failing See, oh, minutes before the show. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, well, I was very happy yesterday because my Steve husband came home from a week of being in Montana. So that was the longest I'd ever been out without him. So that was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, But while I was gone, I picked up a Radeon RX 560 4 gig to play around with and, and test the Vulcan uh, Vulcan with the the open source Mesa drivers, and that'll be a lot of fun. I have some older AMD GPUs and Radeons, but I I wanted to play with a new one. So Team Red, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, what's new with you, my man? Well, I uh, finally got all the parts necessary for the Steam box. There it is. It's packed in there. It's uh, it's working. Sort of, because there are several issues when it comes to Raven Ridge APUs and Linux, but more on that on that Saturday show, What You Love So Much. Stick around. Hmm. I haven't done too much over here. I'm trying to get our show notes kind of in order because we give those out as early access. It's not, this is what we call it, so you can get in and like give us suggestions and tell us we're stupid uh, before the show goes out. And I uh, did that, and I played Bioshock for the very first time. <laughs> so cool. been, been poking the protons and pretty much it. So let's just get right into this because um, Pedro, you're, you're not getting any Linux apps for that Chromebook. Actually, I am because of the new list of Chromebooks, which are not getting Linux apps, which were uh, recently revealed by Google. Uh, it, they basically said all the uh, Chromebooks, which currently run Chrome OS on the uh, 3.14 version of the kernel, those won't get um, any uh, Linux app support. And they give you the list, and it, I'm looking through all the Acer ones. It's like, oh, it's not there. Oh, it's not there. So, yeah, I got pretty lucky when it comes to the R11. It's the Cyan um, for the, uh, like the code name. They all have different code names. They're mostly Final Fantasy or video game characters. A lot of them are Final Fantasy characters. Uh, but yeah, it's um, that one, the R11, is going to get them. Uh, it's already in beta. If you're uh, signed into the beta version of Chrome OS, you can already play around with uh, some Chrome apps. And they work, which is kind of awesome to see. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm good. But it's got to bite a little bit for people who bought the older versions. Well, I would say that, you know... You didn't buy a Chromebook expecting to be able to run native Linux apps. You didn't. So this is I didn't. <laughs> this is a little bit of a bonus soda, and I don't think there's anything yes. necessarily wrong, since a lot of these Chromebooks have a hard time running Chrome OS. But Jill, you had some thoughts yeah. on this. Yeah, I I'm just going to stick to Crouton on my unsupported Chromebooks, <laughs> uh, because running containerized apps on them would just be slow anyways. And... Um, why do that when I ha I can run Debian apps natively? So um, on my older Chromebooks, I, I'm yeah I, I can't uh, run it anyways, Christini. 
And uh, but I was thinking of getting a new Chromebook just so I can play around with Christine and get a cheap Chromebook and see actually how it runs <laughs> on a supported one. <laughs> Good times. Um, Ubuntu Touch OTA four. It's a thing. It's out. I, I didn't even know this was still in development. Yeah, yeah. So after eight months of work, Ubu Ports releases Ubuntu Touch OTA four release. This is the first major release since Canonical dropped the project. And mm-hmm. a number of security uh, fixes, um, and more st- uh, a number of security fixes, more stability and performance improvements uh, are uh, on the new release. And it upgraded from fifteen point oh four LTS, um, actually just fifteen oh four to sixteen oh four LTS, and from QT five point four to QT six point nine, and uh, that will definitely yeah five. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay. you did a typo in the oh, show notes there. <laughs> yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> and uh, uh, new power saving features uh, to boot. And actually, the upgrades have been postponed till the OTA 5 release to fix some bug fixes. So you will need to update them manually. But I'm actually really, really excited about this because I have the older version on my OnePlus One phone. And I've always loved the Ubuntu Touch experience because the look and feel is really really nice and and but the older releases were a little sluggish so i'm hoping that this fixes all those issues and it looked like it will <laughs> all right so that's it's the um i hope that uh even with canonical dropping it and everything else i hope that this will become i don't i don't it's not going to ever become a competitor for android that ship has long since sailed away uh, yeah. but i want it to be a viable phone os uh, something yes. yeah uh, something that works something that you can still use your phone as a phone and have some extra stuff on accounts of you having a smartphone but unless i find myself in a position where i'm in possession of um, more phones that i know what to do with yeah <laughs> I'm probably going to give it a pass <laughs> yeah i don't know Aww. i mean my first thought is hey we we have sailfish and that's yeah the, and, and you can definitely listen i gotta quit hitting that buddy uh <laughs> but I, I was more interested in that there's a humbuntu touch audio cast and there's 32 episodes of it i'm going mm-hmm. to go listen to that because i have no idea how you can do yeah. 32 episodes on a mobile operating <laughs> system which is awesome i'm not saying that is a bad thing i'm excited <laughs> so i will go check that out um and check out what Intel did. Yes. Intel, Intel, <laughs> Intel. This has since been updated, but the initial headline reads, Intel says no more benchmarks on Linux and new terms of microcode update, which they basically did because, well, Intel is used to being able to get away with this kind of stuff. Just mm-hmm. not anymore, but Intel had to try. It's like, LOL, joke. Uh, but, you know, initially there was a clause in the fine print that prevented benchmark of comparison test results from being published and you know mm. unsurprisingly everyone had a problem with this like 100 mm. percent. that was a thing except for fedora yeah. and red hat well here's the thing yeah <laughs> even the linux distributions were that that's one story the other story is everyone like wait a minute we, we can't even test this and tell people but you know intel updated the microcode they updated the licensing and yeah, that only after, only after the internet pulled a WTF mate on them. I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to revise it so you can do it. Because I, w- what is this about? Is this basically, did it curb check performance it's, to mitigate, yeah. you know, the flaws between Spectre and Meltdown mm-hmm. that hard? And they're like, nobody look behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. No, the microcode update is uh, Intel's latest effort to mitigate even more of the Spectre issues. And as predicted, as everyone was saying for when uh, Spectre and Meltdown first became a thing, yeah, that's going to introduce a performance uh, dip if you're Mm -hmm. going to (laughs) disable speculative uh, speculative, um, prediction. So, yeah, lo and behold, it did, and Intel felt threatened enough to uh, say, yeah, no, you can't publish um, software benchmark or comparison test results. And the last time that Intel uh, went after benchmarks, it was when AMD's t bread processor was kicking their um, proverbial posterior. And since they got caught manipulated 
manipulating uh, the benchmarks back then, I wonder if they thought, oh, you know what we could do? We could just prohibit people from publishing them outright. Yeah, that worked well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, it, yeah. it could be a little bit of maliciousness. It could just be Intel going, well, let's see if we can get away with this. Yeah. <laughs> it could be testing the waters. Absolutely. Yeah. Joe, yeah, I was, you? well, I was proud of Debian. I said, good on you, Debian. Um, and, and really, I think they're just really worried about wor worsening performance and Intel lying about it like they have in the past. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Intel, I don't hate you as much as these two do. I'm looking forward to your video card. Call me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to see what they do with the GPU. It's their CPUs that, um, yeah, they're not top dog anymore. Well, they yeah. they are, but uh, yeah, they they haven't had a good couple of uh, eight months. <laughs> well, since we're often accused of universally hating on GNOME for some reason, let, let's hate on GNOME. <laughs> Ubuntu and CentOS are undoing a GNOME security. Feature. Current versions of Ubuntu and Cent OS are disabling a security feature that was added to the GNOME desktop environment last year. That's right. Bubble wrap. Pop, pop. Oh, <laughs> no one see me get freaky. Is that how the, uh, what, nerdy mm -hmm. one? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was added to secure GNOME's thumbnail parser July 2017 with the release of GNOME 3.26. Kind of logically, they looked at it and they said, hey, man, this is a new security feature and we're going to leave it out because there's not enough resources to get it tested, to get it audited properly. And hey, you know, they won't know if it's really a security feature until somebody audits the code. So I can't yep. really fault them for that, maybe. No, absolutely. No. And to be fair, I too would have felt inclined to leave out something that the GNOME project laid their hands on. Uh, <laughs> But alas, you know, the full desktop environment still made it to Ubuntu proper with 18.04, so what do I know? Uh, they also say, uh, uh, at the end of the article, uh, they talked to one of the canonical engineers, and he said that uh, all packages promoted to Ubuntu main have to go through a thorough review process, which takes time. Where was that thorough review process when <laughs> Unity became the default? Or, you know, GNOME for its memory leaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh pedro right on actually that's what i was thinking through the whole the whole article you know what with unity and all their lenses and you know <laughs> advertisements <laughs> so yeah yeah <laughs> i understand 100 <laughs> percent. i mean i get it and what they're doing i don't have a problem with because you don't know even if something has the best of intentions it, it could have underlying uh issues so not a problem and listen I think we've worn out hating on like unity. Come on. I mean, <laughs> yeah. There's a reason that died. So I'm going to keep pounding on that puddle. So I am just saying, don't, don't, don't kick a desktop manager when it's down. I, I mean. <laughs> okay. So, uh, since we've been hating on gnome, let's, uh, talk about something that gnome is actually doing right, which, mm -hmm. you know, few and far between, they do some things right every now and then. <laughs> and uh, one of those is the Linux virtual firmware or Linux vendor firmware uh, system, which is um, a way for uh, vendors to make their firmware upgrades available for all the different hardware. And we already talked about this. Um, Lenovo joined a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And now Akitio. Akitio? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. basically the only thing I know that they make is external GPU enclosures, and uh, the node, which is their um, baseline model, the one that seems to sell the best, and the one I've been looking at to uh, perhaps give uh, Nori for her Christmas gift. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so she can have she can actually play games on her laptop. Uh, and they are now uh, supplying the firmware for the node in the LVFS. It's only in testing right now, so you may want to keep that in mind if you have one of these. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's great to see, and it's something that's actually useful because if you have a laptop with a Thunderbolt port, you kind of really want to, you know, plug in an external GPU through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is really awesome because it'll make those the, the old laptops be able to play the modern games. It's pretty pretty yeah. cool, and I've, <laughs> actually I've been wanting to get one of the nodes as well and play around with it. So that's really cool, and. Um, also in the update, Richard Hughes states that Lenovo also added support for the ThinkPad T460 series mm -hmm. on the LVFS. 
So that's really cool too. So every week it seems like we're going to get more firmware where, and the more, mm -hmm. the better. <laughs> oh, whatever. System 76 would like a word with you, young lady. <laughs> They know that uh -oh. right quick. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, the external <laughs> closures, Thunderbolt, that's neat. I can never get one because then I would be incapable of giving a wimpy static for having one himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> there is that. But Jill, you got some interesting news about Blender this week. Oh, yes. Open source Hollywood Blender. Yay. This is exciting. So two weeks ago on LWW, we talked about how amazing it was that the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences teamed up with the Linux Foundation. And they formed the Academy Software Foundation to advocate for the use of open source software in the film, television, and gaming industry. Ton Rosendahl, chairman of the Blender Foundation, attended ZGraph. That's the annual uh, computer and visual effects convention that happens every year around the world, the world's largest one. And um, that's actually where the Academy Software Foundation was announced during the keynote, which is amazing in and of itself. <laughs> the Linux Foundation was at Seagraph. So, um, but what was awesome is this is Tan's report, um, his blog that he met with Oculus, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, Wacom, Epic Games, Adobe, and Josh Sam, formerly from Autodesk and Elias Maya. And he also talked with Kronos um, to talk about in, in, implementing the Vulkan API into Blender. Ooh. Yes, that's very, very sweet. And um, But what's really, really amazing is, is Tan noticed a few years ago that Blender was finally being taken seriously in the animation industry. But at this year's Seagraph, companies were actually wanted to do business with them and were, talk, were talking with them. So that that's a major milestone in our, our favorite open source animation software. And this is really, and now Blender is setting the open source standard of which everyone is going to follow in the animation industry. And all the companies want to collaborate with them. And this is just really, really amazing. And, um, and it's all the companies, you know, um, Elias, Autodesk, you know, all, all of them want to collaborate with Blender. And, yeah. um, you know, even if, if those companies aren't using Blender directly, they'll, they'll add the plugins for Blender within their software. So an open source. Let's hope they can tr contribute those uh, <laughs> modifications upstream. Please don't pull yes. a canonical on that one. Please. Yes, yes, yes. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how exactly this shakes out in the future. I mean, like right now yeah. in industry, you know, if you're looking at character animation, you're dealing with Maya. If you're doing rigid body yes. animation, stuff like that. You're going to be yeah. dealing with Cinema 4D. Those are your mainstays. That's what you're going to walk into if you walk into a studio. Blender yeah. has been making inroads, no doubt. And it's good to see. And yeah. for a long time, I mean, Blender was about as friendly as a coiled rattlesnake. But its functionality and its usability <laughs> yes. have greatly increased. And it's good, good, good yeah. to see this. Yeah. This, this is just really awesome. And, and actually... Uh, uh, even Disney use a, their 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 are use open source plugins in Maya. So because Maya doesn't do everything they need to do, often mm -hmm. they you need to use several programs. And you know I've done work on movie trailers and and commercials, and I'm I'm seeing the change to open source, and it's just wonderful. It's good times. <laughs> so uh, Linux isn't secure, Pedro. No, no, it isn't. According to a team of uh, academic and government-backed researchers, uh, the monolithic Linux code is basically the reason that Linux is just awful when it comes to security. That's what they say anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's um, the team in uh, New South Wales, uh, Australia, uh, were they basically took uh, the Linux kernel because, you know, it's open source and they can have a look at it. And they saw that with the however, what is it, 20-something million uh, lines of code that they have in there. Million source lines of code. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> uh, they have, um, well, they basically have everything built into the kernel. And we've seen that. Uh, if you have... Mm -hmm. uh, ever run Linux and have uh, had a look or have had a chance to compare like a deblopped kernel to a, the regular Linux kernel, you'll know that there are significant differences between the two, especially when it comes to uh, 3D acceleration. But um, 
Yeah, having everything in the kernel is or could be a major security risk if there is a bug. If something isn't working as intended, then that will make the kernel much more vulnerable than it would otherwise be. And since the kernel is so big, anything that's running with kernel permissions is going to affect the entire system. And that is their main argument as to why this is um, a bad idea. Mm. Now, I know that I... Mm -hmm. I'm very much waiting for the uh, Linus Torvald's comment on this yes. particular subject. <laughs> Personally, I, really I think this is to too stupid to deserve a comment, man. I mean, come Aww. on. Yeah, you know what? Microsystem, <laughs> microkernel systems, they could be more secure, but this entire thing is complete hypothetical. A little bit biased. Yeah. They kind of left out, mm -hmm. I don't know, OS X. They yeah, left out Windows. Windows. 100% yeah. on that. Also I model of the kernels. Model yeah. the kernels in general. That's the thing that hangs out. I mean, the, the entire point of the study is like, hey, man, you know what? We, we could absolutely make humans, you know, live longer if we could make them raptor bus proof. But <laughs> while that is true, they would live longer if they could survive both getting eaten by a raptor and being run over by a bus. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon. However, yeah. um, Google is working on raptor bus proof technology in the form of fuchsia. Which is mm -hmm. a microkernel design, so it, that grabs some popcorn. Watch that, but <laughs> this entire yes, article well, kind of struck me the wrong yeah. way. This is like yeah. really yeah. come on, <laughs> really okay. It's like the way that they worded it, and even I like know. the quotes I that know. they got from the uh, team of researchers. It's like, yeah, you're clearly trying to push something. Do you work yeah. for Jira security? Well, uh, what are no. you playing at? <laughs> Oracle, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're working for big micro kernel. <laughs> yes. Wake up, sheeple. Um, okay, a little bit of fun before we get out of this. Uh, mm -hmm. That's Windows 95, uh, exhibit style. That's right, poop emoji, rocket emoji, so you know you're in for fun. <laughs> uh, this is Windows 95 and Electron. Runs on Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. That's meta meta. Uh, <laughs> it is what it says on the tin. This is a Windows 95 running an Electron app. Yes, it's the full thing, period. I'm sorry, period. Uh, standalone download 64 bit and 32 bits available does it work oh yes it does uh shouldn't this have been a native app absolutely does it run doom uh the answer is yes please yeah <laughs> yeah yes it's very it slow but it does <laughs> yes <laughs> this this is just a little bit horrifying also but let me run it in a browser in a vm mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. No, it's, it's, uh, what really baffled me was like, okay, this was a joke. That's neat. It's going to have one release and stuff. We're going to see another update. Nope. Nope. Two days ago, Windows 95 <laughs> V1.3. A bit more help. Yes. So apparently uh, the developer has uh, is so much into this particular joke that he's even including all of the help files that come with Windows 95. Yes. <laughs> and they just included floppy disk support on the latest version. <laughs> that was awesome. But this is, you know, let's electron all the things, including Linux distros now, which which actually would be cool. But but, but do we really want to see the see them run slower? <laughs> That's my question. And then you know, but I for, I, yeah. <laughs> I will make the argument that for the sake of preservation, that might not be a bad idea. It's easy to run, anyone can yes. spool one up. That might not be a bad idea. <laughs> and and actually, to me, when I, when I was uh, playing around with it, I was seeing this as more of a modern Wayback Machine. E Electron, the modern Wayback Machine. <laughs> I, <laughs> these more emulators. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, when it first came out, I did have that morbid curiosity, but it wasn't enough to try it out so i can i mean i assume it works by all reports it works and you too can go back to the dark ages and try some of those horrifying experiences but that's gonna it do is it slow for our little bit of news uh pedro we're coming up on the part where we get to thank the people who make oh, this yes. show possible <laughs> There's a lot of you lovely people uh, funding us and making this insanity what we call a midweek show possible. And you too can <laughs> support us by going to LinuxCapeGas.com. You hit the support button and there's a multitude of ways you can pick your Amazon affiliate links, your Newegg affiliate link. Uh, there's uh, an Amazon wish list if you don't want to give us money 
so to speak, you'd ra- you'd rather uh, who would you know, be crazy enough to give us money, Pedro? Oh, I don't know. There's um, Pedro over a hundred. <laughs> no, no, you're making this up because <laughs> no, no. If you go Yay! to patreoncom forward slash Linux Gamecast, there's an insane number of people. Seriously, a lot of you have uh, decided to part uh, ways with your hard-earned money. And you basically decided to give a teeny tiny little bit uh, to mm-hmm. us. And we very much appreciate it. It lets us do this show. It lets us do the uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday streams. It's all thanks to you. And we thank you very, very much. You even get access to something called Love the Touching. That That's an actual title that we have. Oh, yeah. For, um, <laughs> Because we do like to dance for our coin. We're just like, oh, doors. It's like, no, we got some early access stuff. We got some cool Discord rewards. There's a new thing I'm cracking out. I'm going, I should have just called it the atomic feature because our pre pre super shows is going to have a creep uh, feature. Mm-hmm. One thing yes. I'm trying to do right now is I just put a post up on the Patreon page for everyone who is a Death Note and above because we like naming people silly names. And those are people with show note access. If you currently <laughs> want and don't have, leave a comment on that. I've already had a couple people do that and we'll make sure you're in that completely non-automated system that arbitrarily gets updated when i remember it's still a thing mm-hmm. uh but we need mm-hmm. to thank aldius yes aldius, aldius. is our, our yes. new patron and he's awesome he's already came in on our lgc after shows yes. and play that was awesome and vera tenuda increased his pledge and uh, that's really really wonderful thank you vera tenuda He's been around the for naked a while. truth. <laughs> That's awesome. Keeping us loud, live, and independent. We're doing this what now four days a week with all types of things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should go back and check out Pedro. Pedro played with Proton. Which... Yes, uh, last yes. Uh, last night's stream was uh, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl in Proton. So we'll yeah. have a look at that. And Jill, you and Jordan are going to play a board game or something Thursday. Yes, right? we're going to play the Lasers and Feelings RPG. Yeah, so we're going to have, have fun with that. And, and uh, Jordan has made a new template for it. You definitely and, want to tune into yeah. that because I talked to Jordan and Jordan's nervous about it. So it's probably yeah. just, just going to be a dumpster fire. So Jordan is actually hyped about it. So yeah, mm-hmm. go go in there and uh, crush his feelings. Oh, <laughs> no, he's so, Jordan is so prepared. I think it, it'll, it'll be, be fun we'll to, just be fine. It, well, you see, that's why you don't get too prepared because then it goes wrong. And you're like, man, I wasted all that time getting prepared for this. And, Nope. Mm-mm. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what say we get into a slice bar? <laughs> Aye. Mm-hmm. So someone decided to bring a DAC and a DC to the Pi. So you may remember when the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus was announced that they said that, oh yeah, it will totally support uh, power over Ethernet. But it doesn't really support it out of the box, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there's uh, something that will actually let you do that. It's a little hat. It's what they call the little thing is that you can put on top of the GPIO pins, and they do a multitude of things. This one <laughs> literally enables... I uh, dare oh, you yeah. to get that through the TSA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it enables you to actually get uh, power over Ethernet. Yeah, And what you can do with those, what is it, like 40-something watts, 50 watts that you could get over Ethernet? 45 um, something. Yeah, yeah 45. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what you can do with it is you can make that little hat with the four Raspberry Pi mm-hmm. Zeros, which they called a cluster hat. That just blew my teeny tiny Portuguese mind because... <laughs> Oh, it's a pie powering four pies. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> Aw, this, you know, this is actually uh, kind of actually revolutionary um, in that it makes remote deployment of the Raspberry embedded equipment, routers, and switches even cheaper because you don't have to run extra power lines and no extra power or even an SD card is needed for the Raspberry Pi to w- run. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. for a company that's deploying hundreds of these, uh, very cost effective. <laughs> so I that, love the idea of power really awesome. over Ethernet. I know it's been on a long time. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. Don't trust it a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's for me yeah. anyway. It's easier to trust like forty-five watts coming in through the Ethernet port than a twelve hundred watt power supply. You know, yeah, logically that makes perfect <laughs> sense in my brain meets. However, something about Ethernet. 
data bit noodles carrying power. I'm like, I don't know about this. Um, That's I, what you, the extra cables are there for, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you only need like four of them. It's terrifying. <laughs> All right. Uh, soda popping. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> someone decided to go crazy with the, his Raspberry Pi project. And uh, they apparently they had a free locker. And they decided, you know what would be great in there? A soda machine. That's what they did. They gra- <laughs> grabbed the Raspberry Pi. They grabbed the TD Tiny LCD display, a little coin uh, receptacle, and it gives you the credit count. You hit the button, and you either get Mountain Dew or Dr Pepper. <laughs> that that just goes beyond neat. That is someone who went at this with a purpose. He yes. had this in mind. He very <laughs> clearly had this. It's like, yeah, no, this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is just awesome it's a 17 year old in high school and this is a, a great project i could have seen my my brother doing this back in the day so <laughs> that's 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 definitely cool and he's making a little money off it to boot <laughs> yep that's uh, that's what i'm saying when i see this i mean you know kids i mean if you're looking for a way to supplement that allowance eight hey, you're lucky if you got an allowance um <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm just saying you know um uh, gray market um consumables in secondary school or even primary school mm? yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it's you find the closest cheapest uh, grocery store you can find you buy all the cheap soda cans and you sell them at like a hundred percent profit. You're gold. Well, you, think... If you live close to school and you don't need your locker, <laughs> you're gold. <laughs> There's definitely a thing. I think everyone's experienced it. No matter what part of um, on the earth that you're at, there was always that one kid that was smart enough to buy candy and sell candy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh. I always want to go back and figure out. You know, like, where's that person at now? Um, <laughs> That's going to do us, ladies and gentlemen. Bit of a short show, but uh, we got through it. And yes. uh, if you would like to chat with us, Peter, we, we got some feedback this week, but it was, uh, we, we always answer your feedback. And the feedback was like question based of like, yeah, yeah I could Google. It's first page of Google question. Mm-hmm. So I wrote you back and, but we'll get back to you next week. How can they do that, Pedro? Well, uh, if you'd like to leave us something that uh, you can't find the answer for in the first page of Google, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box. That's what I'm calling it, and I'm sticking with it. Uh, just uh, fill out your name, your email, uh, the subject, and mm-hmm. your message proper, and then you will probably be asked to train the Google AI. So uh, that's really the only bit that's uh, hard. Well, Ven got lucky there. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, no, that, that's it. You send us a message through there, or you can leave us a comment in the um, in the comments on the website below uh, the post, or on YouTube. Chances are we'll probably see it on YouTube, but if it gets missed because it, I don't know, sometimes it happens, just send us a message through there and mm-hmm. relay your comment through the submission form. We will be very happy to get back to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, yes. beautiful. People. We're gonna yes. cut on some music, roll some credits, and thank everyone again. Let me let me see if this Yay. works. We're, I still have a very rigged system right now. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> cool. And the music. It blew up. Oh, oh, there's music. Yay! I hear the music. <laughs> and thank you to and all our wonderful credits. patrons. Oh, and thank you, um, Fo- M Fox Dog, for the open source Vince Hollywood Stone. Blender story. <laughs> Oh, Portu Gamer, Portu Gamer, and and thank you to Artharon for the a uh, 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 KTO to the LF, LF, uh, LVFS story. That was awesome. I meant to thank you during that. So and thank you to all our wonderful patrons and chat realm who supports us. You guys are wonderful and we love you. And Brought happy to you 20- by Jill, yeah. Van oh. Stone, and the Portu Gamer. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my bye <laughs> bye chat <Cheryl. laughs>